trust me, I get it. You're feeling the pressure to keep your faith separate from your work, worried that pursuing your God-given dreams might be seen as selfish or misguided. For far too long, we've been held back by a world that tells us that faith and ambition don't mix, that our divinely inspired visions are just wishful thinking. But here's what I've discovered. Our faith isn't a liability in our leadership. As a matter of fact, it's the source of our strength and wisdom. When we fully integrate our leadership with our Christian values, then and only then do we tap into that unshakable divine power. The real challenge is navigating how to boldly pursue our purpose while staying anchored in our faith. And that's exactly what The Beacon Show is all about. Each week, we bring you biblical wisdom and practical strategies from true beacons, Christian leaders who are illuminating the world. And it's also that you can let your light shine brighter and brighter. I'm Tamara Jackson, and this is The Beacon Show. An almost unbelievable journey. <laughs> and you're not done yet. Oh, no. no. Um, is there anything else beyond the college that you're still looking forward to doing? One of, um, it's funny. Uh, one of the the men in the the Friday Mastermind, uh, very prophetic. And the other day, he says, "God wanted me to tell you that your dream's not big enough." Mm. And I'm thinking, we're starting <laughs> campuses, and I've already got uh, Kenya is one of my favorite places. I've been mm. there a few times. Uh, we're we're going to start a, a college in Kenya and Uganda, in the Philippines, and Brazil, and several other places. Wow. And I'm thinking, how much bigger can, can it be? get? Yeah, I'm just excited. Hmm. One of the one of the motivating factors for doing this school and not delaying is uh, we don't know when Christ returns. That's right. We do know that the devil is trying to push his hand throughout history. Mm -hmm. The last time was in the early 1900s, I think, when uh, uh, Lenin and Stalin and Hitler and Mao Zedong and Pol Pot all rose up and killed tens of millions of people. And now we see, I think, another uprising right now, another massive attack of the enemy with um, uh, who would have thought five years ago that you would be the bad guy if you thought it was wrong that a man dressed as a woman danced sexually yeah. in front of kindergarten yeah. students. Yeah. Different right? world now. It's, it's seriously, and it accelerated mm -hmm. so fast. Very quickly. Yes. And, uh, and I have uh, evangelism friends all over the world from Pakistan to Australia to Brazil to everywhere that are saying they're seeing the same things. <laughs> In the, in the other in cultures, the countries, yeah. that the morality is being the thing that's attacked right now. So I think time is of the essence. When uh, one time I was in Kenya and we had done a conference on evangelism, and then uh, the our sponsor had taken us to this park to kind of walk around before we were getting on our airplane. And there's a bunch of spider monkeys. They had as many spider monkeys as some places have squirrels. They're like everywhere. <laughs> and uh, we we're all playing with them and stuff. And, and, and he comes up and he taps me on the shoulder and he says, he goes, Dr. Bob, we must mind the time. Mm -hmm. And he said it in this cute British accent. Yeah. Right. So I didn't, you know, take it seriously. I said, okay. A few minutes later, we must mind the time. And uh, finally it dawned on me, how much time do we have yeah, to make right. our flight? Yeah. And he told me, and I'm like, oh, we got to <laughs> mind the time. So here's my lesson is we have to mind the time because the devil's not waiting. He's oh, destroying God. as many lives as he can, as fast as he can. And uh, we, the Bible says, Jesus said, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail oh, yeah. against us. Mm -hmm. The reason the gates of hell cannot prevail is because we're on the attack. Mm -hmm. We're not sitting in defense inside a church, you know, it's counting.